Hello everyone, this is Daikaiju Space Little approaching it, and today we're gonna take a look at Ghost Rider. <laughs> The history to Ghost Rider is quite an interesting one. Hell, the first incarnation wasn't even by Marvel Comics. In the early 1950s, Magazine Enterprises created the character, taking a different direction with him than what we think of when we hear the name. This one took place in the old Wild West following US Marshal Rex Fury, who was nearly killed by white dudes disguised as Native Americans, but got saved and trained by the ghost of his friends, and is provided with a white outfit and supernatural powers, and a white horse. On his journey, he battles monsters that you'd expect from horror films from the era this comic came out. And of course, back in 1967, Marvel Comics released their first issue for the Western hero originally known as the Ghost Rider. This one followed a cowboy named Slade Carter, who got shot by white dudes posing as Indians trying to help settlers. But after he's found by an Indian tribe, they take him back to their camp and witness a sign from the gods that Carter is their chosen one. So is provided with superpowers, a white horse, and a costume, and battles evil throughout the series. However, in 1972, writer Gary Frederick and artist Mike Plug made a more demonic incarnation of this character that rides a motorcycle and looks like a flaming skeleton, leading to Slade's rider being renamed the Phantom Rider. This one follows a motorcycle stuntman named Johnny Blaze who becomes bound to the spirit of vengeance Zarathos after making a deal with Mephisto trying to save his dying father. But after getting fucked over, he seeks vengeance and battles Mephisto and all sorts of evil as the Ghost Rider. This character would later appear in other media, such as more comics, TV shows, video games, and even getting a movie adaptation in 2007, which got a sequel a few years later, both films being by Columbia Pictures. When the movie was announced, fans were quite hyped for the film's release. But despite being a box office success, it was quite negatively received by critics, and the fans of the comics weren't too pleased with it either. Though it has gained a bit of a cult following over time, and even was nominated for Best Horror Film at the 2007 Saturn Awards. Anyway, let's take a look at this underrated gem to see why it's such a solid movie, in my personal opinion. When a young Johnny Blaze, played by Matt Long, finds out his father Barton, played by Brett Collin, has cancer, he sells his soul to Mephisto to cure his father's illness. However, though he kept his word on curing his cancer, he caused Barton to die in a motorcycle accident quite quickly to avoid him from getting in the way of his plans. So Johnny is left with no other choice but to run away from his loved ones to keep them safe, and years later he becomes famous for his dangerous stunts, while later meets his girlfriend Roxanne Simpson, played by Ava Menendez again, who is now a television reporter. Mephisto offers to release Johnny's contract if he becomes his bounty hunter known as the Ghost Rider, to take the souls of sinners and kill his son Blackheart, played by Wes Bentley, whose intention is to possess 1,000 souls to transform into hell on Earth. The story to this movie, though is overall engaging, isn't without its flaws. First of all, we needed far more screen time with Johnny and his father before he realized he had cancer to get you to care more, and when he was cured by Mephisto, it should have played with that happiness much longer before killing him, as it would have made it drastically more effective. And when he's trying to prove to Roxanne why he can't be with her, he just explains without showing her the evidence, which he had because before this scene he was creating flames with his own hands. Another question this creates is why did he just do that from the beginning, as at first he wasn't even going to explain to her because she wouldn't believe him. The decision makes no sense, and it just makes Johnny look stupid in the process. But problems aside, it's pretty damn good. Besides the beginning moving too fast, the film moves at a good pace as it's able to feed you its mythology at the right amounts, and it balances the action and horror scenes with the story strongly. 
Mephisto sending Ghost Rider out to destroy his son so he could absorb all the souls instead was extremely interesting and had me on the edge of my seat to see where I was going to go next. And Mephisto, played by Peter Fonda, is so freaking lit. When he tricked Johnny into selling his soul to cure his father's cancer, but kills him afterwards so he doesn't get between their deal, was absolutely evil and manipulative as all hell, but at the same time badass, and he's got quite the compelling history and gave some pretty memorable lines too. And how could I not mention the freaking chilling performance from Peter Fonda? Every time he's on, you know he's fucking evil, but you can't help but love him because he's so goddamn cool. Every time Johnny and Mephisto have a conversation, you can feel the tension Johnny has towards him, and Mephisto's absolutely manipulative pride and dark intentions. I also want to bring up how they only show his satanic look in small bursts, and how terrifying it is, looking like something that actually crawled from the pits of hell. You're no good to me, Dad. You... You killed him. I cured his cancer. That was the deal. But I couldn't let him come between us. One day, when I need you, I will come. Until then, I'll be, uh, I'll be watching. Forget about friends. Forget about family. Forget about love. As I already stated about Barton Blaze, he dies way too early on in the film, making it where he's really nothing more than a plot device, and it's a damn shame, because he had potential to be a very fleshed out character, and given more chemistry with Johnny would have made it drastically more hard hitting. However, Brett Cullen makes Barton a convincing father caring about his son, and the little amount of time he does get creates a decent father and son bond that was just unfortunately cut off too soon. Dad, it was a patch of dirt. Uh, that's not the point. <coughs> point is, we've been doing this act less than a week. You're already screwing around. I was just doing it for the crowd. Don't know why you've done it. You think she's going to stand by you when you're in a wheelchair? Huh? Huh, hot shot? Johnny Blaze, played by Matt Long and Nicolas Cage, is a pretty developed character. When he's young, he ends up making huge regrets as he wants to run away with his girlfriend, Roxanne, but ends up getting bombarded with guilt after he realizes his dad's dying from cancer. But due to this grief, he's willing to do pretty much everything to cure him, even going as far as selling his own soul. Yeah, you can argue the fact he was skeptical, but he was still willing to take his chances regardless. Of course, this ended up leading to Barton's death sooner than the cancer did, and it made it where he had to run away from his other loved ones to keep them safe. Of course, this creates an amazing motive for Johnny as a character and adds some solid growth too. Despite his dad dying too early on in the story, there's no denying the impact he's got on Johnny, as he's trying his best to make a positive out of his father's passing, even doing the horrifically dangerous stunts he was going to do. Matt Long gives a performance that helps Johnny feel like a young, reckless man that still has a lot to learn, while Nicolas Cage makes him a more mature and grown-up individual, trying his best to better himself, looking for a sign of greatness, and has been through hell. And oh my fucking god, the Ghost Rider is downright badass. His dialogue is so goddamn good. His design is absolutely incredible, having a vicious flaming skeleton in a dope biker uniform. His voice is intimidating, gives off the demonic tone the Ghost Rider requires, and he owns literally every scene he's in. Besides two or three scenes, he looks pretty goddamn real. His flames move in the same pace as actual fire, and they manage to give him emotions while also having the same movements of an actual skull. Oh, and his right is freaking sick. Don't add me. How does it feel to have all that evil inside of you? All their power? 
all their souls. A thousand souls to burn. Roxanne Simpson, played by Raquel Alessi and Ava Menendez, isn't anything too memorable, but she's fine. She's Johnny's past girlfriend and had plans with him, but due to his deal with the devil, he had no choice but to leave her behind just like his other loved ones. However, she wasn't aware of this. She just thought he ran away because he witnessed his papa's death and was too much for him. So it's understandable when they meet again years later, she's not gonna want to be with him. In fact, Johnny has to literally take risk of getting ran over and stopping everyone on a fucking freeway, and this is what happens. And he just lays one on her after clearly being rejected. What the hell, you fucking beast? But apparently, being a horny animal pays off, cause that somehow got her to go out with him, even though not only have they not been a thing for freaking years, but they haven't even seen each other in a while. But with that being said, they were a couple at the time, so him obviously wanting to start over and taking drastic measures to get her does make sense somewhat for her to give him a second chance. But what in God's name was he thinking when she interviewed him? I need sport. <laughs> no, uh, it's, uh, it's part of the costume. Okay, I'm ready in five, four, three, two. How's your dad? Johnny Blaze, thank you for talking to us before your big jump. No one has ever attempted such a distance before. 300 feet from field go to field go. What's going through your mind right now? You look really good. I've seen you on TV. You know, I watch a lot of TV and you do a really good job. Johnny, what drives somebody to risk their life for entertainment? I heard you got married. This is awkward! No. I do think the romance between Johnny Blaze and Roxanne could use improvements when it comes to as much development they're able to fit in, but it's overall handled properly and it did its job. Raquel Alessi is the believable young girl in love, and Ava Menendez was a great reporter dealing with complex feelings for her old boyfriend. He says you're not good enough for me. That you're just a face. So what are we gonna do, Johnny? We'll leave. We'll jump on the back and just keep going. But what about your dad? What about the show? He doesn't need me. He doesn't need anybody. Tomorrow, noon, we'll meet here. There were a dozen people waiting in line and you went through a whole roll of quarters. Look at my face, you could tell. I was just terrified that my dad was gonna come in any second. Matt, played by Donald Logue, is Johnny's best friend and crew leader. You can feel the friendship between Johnny and Mac, as there's decent enough time of the two hanging out, and Donald Logue made his concern for Johnny quite convincing. However, I feel like they underused him, as despite having well done character scenes with Johnny, they kinda forget his existence for a while, and when he does come back, something goes on that I won't spoil that should have had an effect on Johnny, but it didn't. They just stopped acknowledging he exists, and it's a damn shame. What? What? You should be taking a dirt nap after that ragdoll today. I got Lucky. No, I got a hunting dog named Lucky. He's got one eye and no nuts. Luck don't cover it, JB. And you got an angel looking after you. Yeah, maybe. Mac, you in? Yeah. Yeah, I'm in. Scoot over, ladies. What's the ante? Five part draw. Maybe it's something else. <laughs> 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 
Carter Slade, played by Sam Elliott, being the previous Ghost Rider, as he made a deal with Mephisto because he was a Texas Ranger in the Wild West who got greedy and ended up being sentenced to death. But with that deal of selling his soul and becoming the Ghost Rider, he had to do his end of the bargain, which was collecting 1,000 souls to bring hell on Earth, but though he knew the destruction this would cause, he did the right thing in the end, and that was leaving and made sure those souls were hidden from Mephisto for 150 years, and even tricking him into thinking he's dead. This dude is great. First of all, his backstory is interesting, and he even helps Johnny learn his powers and gain control as the Ghost Rider. He's a flawed individual who used to be greedy and was willing to fuck up the entire world, but seen the errors of his ways and urges Johnny not to do what he did. And Sam Elliott is top notch as Carter. You can tell he's a wise old man who isn't exactly proud of what he'd done in the past, but progressed as a person and wants to do good. He also nails making him seem like a legit cowboy from the old Wild West. And of course, his design and effects are excellent, as it's cool to see a western ghost rider on a demonic horse. Stick to the shadows. This is the end of the trail for me. I got nothing left. I could only change one more time and I was saving for this. God knows I've made my share of mistakes. Been trying to make things right ever since. Guess all I can do now is hope he sees fit to give me a second chance. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, kid. <laughs> Blackheart, played by Wes Bentley, is okay, but I can see why fans of the comic version may not be fond of him. They took a character from what I heard was badass and looked cool into a rebellious emo boy you'd catch listening to shit like blood on the dance floor. Trust me, he's only mad because his dad said he was going through a phase. But that said, he isn't bad at all. His ability to kill those with a single touch is rather unsettling. How he attempts to frighten Johnny by attacking people he cares about is quite smart. And I really enjoyed the father and son association with him and Mephisto. It's a shame it wasn't as dived into as much as it should. Wes Bentley executed the character with a young demon personality trying to overthrow his father well. Regardless how you feel about the decision they went with this character, I think Wes did a good job for matching this version. Looking for someone. Back to hell. We're not gonna have a meaningful conversation now, are we? You're going down. I don't think so. As for the hidden, they consist of Grizzle, played by Lawrence Brules, pretty much being the tough guy, Abigur, played by Matthew Wilkinson, being the cowardly but powerful demon who can make himself one with the wind, and the extremely aggressive Wallow, played by Daniel Fredrickson. Unfortunately, there isn't a whole lot to say about them, but they do their parts. It ain't so tough. You're a slow learner, aren't you, Ryder? You cannot catch the wind! Slowing down. What? Oh, and this movie is a brilliant blend of action, horror, and dark fantasy. The mythology behind it is dark and gritty, but is also pretty fascinating to say the least. It can be exceedingly unsettling to watch with how easily the Hidden and Blackheart kill people. Not to mention that they will surround you, can teleport, and much other bullshit to stop you from escaping, and how they're killed is plain disturbing. But the action scenes are beautiful. Watching the writer burn people's and entities' souls is too badass not to love, and it is an absolute blast watching him take out the Hidden one by one. However, he's not too OP either. 
Blackheart for a while gives him trouble since he doesn't have a soul, but when he's finally able to kill him, it is definitely awesome. Also, I love how he's throwing fire at Blackheart like it's a fucking snowball! therapeutic right there. The 1000 souls look horrifying, and how they're rendered is quite powerful. And when Johnny is transforming into the Ghost Rider, it looks incredibly painful. Only effects in the movie I really had a problem with was when he transformed his motorcycle and one of the shots the rider is on a building. But besides those, the rest looked high quality. The rock and heavy metal music also adds to the tone of the story following a southern daredevil, and it shows off Ghost Rider's badassery when he's sending souls to hell. Same can also be said for the other tracks too. At the end of the day, Ghost Rider is an underrated gem that deserves far more credit than what it's given. It's got its fair share of issues, but it's still pretty damn good. In fact, I'd say it's even awesome sometimes. If you're into stuff that blends action, horror, and dark fantasy about hunting demons like Gallo, I think you'll have a great time with this if its flaws don't turn you off. So with that being said, I'm gonna award Ghost Rider a solid 7 out of 10 stars. For speaking of Gallo, wouldn't it be lit to see a Ghost Rider adaptation by Kieta Amamea? Just think about how freaking good he'd make it. Anyway, please comment your thoughts down below, and if you like this video, please hit that like button, share it around, and subscribe for more awesome content. Maybe even follow me on social media where I keep you up to date on upcoming projects and more. This is Daikaiji Space Zilla, leaving the building.